couple scandals, you know, are nothing new. We've spoken about them a lot, haven't we? And I think what I always find really interesting is when you look through history, everything simply repeats itself. But given time, many of it is lost in the transition of time. People forget. You know, we live in a different world now, don't we, with social media, news instantly, bits of gossip popping up on your phone, and then suddenly you're distracted by the latest, well, brand new revelation. But way back, oh yes, even Queen Victoria had her own problems with her own children. And one of them, which was possibly the most scandalous, was Princess Louise, the sixth child and the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. Now, as ever, what's interesting here is a lot of people forget exactly her rather notorious background. Her most famous work is that of her mother. She was an extremely gifted sculptor. And you can see her work literally outside Kensington Palace to this day. You're looking at the image now. But oh dear, way back in the very stern and quaint Victorian times, Princess Louise had a rather, shall we say, checkered history. As ever, let me explain. As members of the royal family typically strive to be viewed as figures of high moral standing. It would be an understatement to say that there aren't some rather questionable skeletons in the royal closet. From a prince being accused of being Jack the Ripper, to a king who had so many affairs, he had a special, shall we say, affiliation with many famous actresses of the time. Now, Princess Louise was the sixth child and the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. She was born on March the 18th, 1848. And there are many rumours that still circulate even today, which suggest she was an incredibly scandalous and rather radical figure for her time. From rebelling against her mother's orders to having her affairs and even allegedly giving birth to an illegitimate child, Princess Louise was far from the prim and proper princess. She is known for being, most well, many people think, ahead of her time. She openly supported the suffragette movement, held radical views on women's medicine, and challenged her mother's opinions about where women belong in the world. Remind you of anyone? The Kensington system was devised to control young Victoria. Queen Victoria was named the Grandmother of Europe. A nice, fond nickname, I'm sure you'll agree. As her mother was known as the Grandmother of Europe, it was common practice for Queen Victoria to have her children and grandchildren married off to European heirs and dignitaries. Some successful, some not so. But Louise protested and instead demanded to marry a high-ranking member of British society, John Marquess of Lorn, who later became the Duke of Argyll. Their childless marriage was said to be an unhappy one, punctuated by endless rumours about her husband. But had Louise already had a child? There is belief that Princess Louise had relationships with at least two other men outside her marriage and that she gave birth to an illegitimate child in 1866 or 1867. Son of Queen Victoria's doctor, Frederick Locock and his wife adopted a boy who was born on December the 30th, 1867. Many people believe that this baby was the illegitimate son of Princess Louise from her relationship with her brother's tutor, Walter Sterling. According to biographers for Princess Louise, Queen Victoria's lawyers were called to the Queen at the end of 1867. After this, Lowcock began receiving a fairly large allowance shortly after adopting the boy, and he had been also given a grace and favour apartment in St. James's Palace. To add further evidence to this strange allegation, the boy adopted, Henry Lowcock, grew up in the palace and spent much of his childhood playing with the other royal children. When he was older, he told all of his children that Princess Louise was in fact his mother, and the legend has since passed down in his family. Sadly for Princess Louise, she passed away at Kensington Palace on December the 3rd, 1939. The reason why I wanted to share that story with you is it just proves, doesn't it, as I say, that royal scandals have gone on for centuries. I mean, when you look back, way, way back, say to medieval times, you kind of think, wow, you know, the Saxons, the Normans, whatever. We are living in a time, of course, as I say, where scandals are basically, you know, brought to the fore instantly. We know everything that we think we want to know about the royals in question. 
they can never truly live a sort of blameless life because there's too much going around now, you know. There are servants ready to write books. Back in their day, say, of Princess Louise, it would have been unheard of for a royal servant to even dare publish a book or even talk to a journalist. It wouldn't be the done thing. How times have changed. Do check out more details about Princess Louise if you get the opportunity. There was a wonderful exhibition recently at Kensington Palace which we were able to see. But as ever, there was no mention of that particular royal scandal. As ever, with all royal scandals, there remains something of an enigma. But they're here to remind us that simply nothing is new in the world of history. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.